We now want to add some routes, so let me show you how we do that with fast routes. What I'm going to do is just paste some comments in here first, and these will guide us and show us what we need to do. I've just dropped these comments underneath the existing code that we have in here. I'm going to take this code and use it in a moment, but for the time being, we're going to create something called a dispatcher, and then what we do is we dispatch a URI, so we will take the URI and also the request method, and pass that into the dispatcher or dispatch that in order to obtain the route info. And there's three pieces of information we want back or three pieces we want back if everything has gone okay. We want a status uh, to say that a route was found. We want the handler back and we also want any variables. So if we pass in any variables, for example, an article with an ID of 55, then we want to get back um, a variable ID with a value of 55. And finally, what we're going to do is take the handler, which is returned to us, and then we're going to call it. Okay, so let's start by creating a dispatcher. And this is how we do it with fast route. So it's dispatcher equals, and it's actually a function that we're going to call simple dispatcher. And if we scroll up to the top now, you should see this. So we're importing a function, fast route, simple dispatcher. Inside of here, we pass a callback, and to that callback, we pass a route collector argument. And then using that route collector, we can start to add routes. So route collector, add route, and then the information that we need here is HTTP method, we need the route and we need the handler. So HTTP method, we are going to say get for the actual route. It just needs to match a base URI like so, and then a handler. And here we are just going to use a callback. And then inside of here, this is where we can create our logic. So what we're going to do is just take this here. So we're saying that our content is hello world, and then we are returning from this callback function, we are returning a new response and the content will be this. Let's actually dump this out using Symfony's DD die dump function and see what we get. And so this is what we have. We have something called a mark based dispatcher. And inside of that, we have an array, which is a static route map. And here you should see something which is familiar and that is the route that we just defined. So we said it's gonna be for get requests, we're looking at the base URI, and then it says that that is pointing towards a closure. So a closure, closure is an anonymous function that can access variables imported from outside scope like we are doing here. So let's go ahead and actually use this dispatcher. So what we want to do or what we want to return here is we want to get back the route information. So we're hoping to get back three pieces of information if everything works correctly here. That is the status to say that the route was found. We want to also get our handler and then we also want to get any variables that we can pass to that handler. And so what we'll call this is route info and then we will say dispatcher and we're just going to call dispatch. We need two pieces of information here. We need the HTTP method, which in our case is get, and we also need the URI, and we can get both of those pieces of information off of our request. Obviously, this isn't something that we want to hard code. This is going to be something which is dynamic. It will change with each request that comes into our application. So before we do this, let's go and dump out a request and we'll see where we can get the information that we are looking for. So again, I'm gonna go back to the browser, refresh. Here's all the information on our request and the variables that we want are on the server array. Okay, so scroll down here. This is what we're looking for, request URI, as you can see there. We also want the request method and that is there. So we can access this off of the server variable on our request object. Let's go ahead and do that. So first, request server, and here we want the method, request method that is. Let's drop this down onto its own line. I can copy this onto another line, and then what I want here is request URI. Then again, I'm just gonna go and dump out 
the route info so you'll notice I dump things out quite a lot and that's just to make sure that I have the I am getting the right information and this is working correctly before I go and start and writing any more code so let's refresh this okay so we're getting back what we want one I'll show you what that means in a minute but here's our closure i.e our handler the one is this here it's the status so we have a dispatcher interface if we go to that then you'll see we have our three statuses here zero means not found one means found and two means method not allowed which usually means that you maybe you've sent a get request to a certain endpoint but a get request doesn't exist for that but there might be other kinds of uh, re requests allowed such as post or put for that endpoint but we'll talk about that kind of stuff later on when we get to doing that all we want to do now is just get this working uh, happy path I'm going to take my route info and I'm going to sort of unpack it into variables. So we know that the first one is the status. Uh, we're not actually going to use that. The second one is the handler. And then the third thing we should get back is the variables. As you saw, that was actually empty. But when we do another example in a moment, we'll actually use some variables. So now I have those three variables. What I want to do is call the handler method passing in the variables and then return whatever that returns so return handler vars and if i go and refresh this now then we're back to hello world because we are actually returning a response containing this content so that was a nice easy example now let's do one using something called route parameters and what I'd like to do for this is have this kind of URI where we can say something like posts followed by an ID for a post. And so that's the kind of route that we need to match. Let's go and give that a go. So I'm going to copy this whole route. You can have as many routes as you like, but as you can see, this could start to be quite cumbersome. Imagine we had like 50 routes in our application. Would you really want to be writing it all in a handle method on the kernel like this? that wouldn't be practical. So what we're gonna do shortly is actually refactor this and store all the routes in their own file. Okay, but for this one, it is also going to be a get. We are going to get a post endpoint. And then if we look how this works in the documentation, if we want to have a variable called ID, which is for one digit or more, this is how it's done. And so in between these parentheses here, this is where we define our route parameters. And when we define route parameters, that means we can actually pass an argument to our callback function or whichever handler we use. So in here, instead of saying hello world, what I'm gonna say is this is post, and then I'll change those to double quotes. Route params is an array, so I can access an ID key off of the route params array. So a route params and then ID. All of the rest should work exactly the same here. We don't have to change any of this. Again, we're getting the status, the handler and the variables off of route info. And then we are calling the handler and passing in the variables. And this time we should have some variables because we created our route parameter here. And maybe it would have been more clear if I'd have just called this variables the same as what I've used here. But basically, we're referring to the same thing. This is what is getting passed into this function here. Let's go and give this a go. Okay, this is post 23. And to show that this is dynamic, let's just change it to something else. This is post 55. And just to be clear on this, we could have given this uh, ID here, we could have given it any name, we could have called it post ID. If we'd have called it something else, we just would have needed to make sure that this uh, name, the key that we're trying to access, actually matched up what we called it. So that's happy path version. That's what happens when a route can be found. If a route can't be found, then we actually get a different status back and we have to handle it in a different way. So say for example, I went to posts and I did pass a route param, but I didn't pass a digit, I passed something else. And I'll just demo that now. For example, if I went foo, then this time we're getting undefined array key and we get some errors because we don't actually have handling set up for if we pass the wrong kind of information. Like I say, all we are handling here 
is a route found response. But don't worry about that, that's something that we're going to get to very shortly. <laughs> 